The Education Secretary, David Blunkett, is expected to veto a proposal by the Department of Health that would compel primary schools to teach children about sex. Instead, it would be left to the discretion of head teachers and governors, and parents will be allowed to withdraw their children from lessons if they wish. Britain has the highest rate of teenage pregnancy in Europe, and health ministers had argued that sex education was vital to reduce the numbers. Our correspondent, Sue Lloyd Roberts, has been to Holland, where sex education for young children is seen as a vital component of their education. The visitor to Amsterdam could be forgiven for thinking that the Dutch are obsessed by sex. It's everywhere, readily available and every fantasy catered for. But the Dutch would argue that it's this openness which proves that they have the habit under control. The openness starts at school, primary school. This group have been studying the subject since they were six. Ashley is congratulated for her essay on reproduction. The illustrations alone might get a pupil in a primary school in Britain in trouble. Keeley contributes to the discussion with some authority as her mother has recently had a baby. The mother's tummy gets bigger and bigger and then the baby comes out, she explains. And in case Keeley needs further explanation as to what's been going on at home, children's television cartoons leave nothing to the imagination. She and her nine-year-old brother know exactly how their baby brother came about and in a country where it's legal for consenting 12-year-olds to have sex, they're well aware of the consequences. But perhaps the biggest contrast with Britain, they routinely discuss sex at mealtimes. From 9 years and 10, 11 years. At 9, 10, 11, they're entitled to know about love and sexuality, because when they reach a certain age, they'll want to experiment, and they must feel they have the freedom to discuss sex, even during supper. Leia and Mo, both 14, drop into a local newsagent on their way back from school. Last week, their favorite magazine was giving out free condoms. This week, it's advice on sexual technique. And yet, extraordinarily, the Dutch have the lowest teenage pregnancy rate in Europe, and the average age for their first intercourse is 17, a year older than in Britain. Their attitude is sophisticated and scathing of their European neighbors. In England, uh... The English are prudish and can't talk about sex. We find it easier to talk about it. We're better educated and therefore better informed about the consequences of what we're doing. If you have a baby when you're at school, then you can't complete your education, which means that you have no future. It mucks up your life. The Dutch would argue that it's not just education, it's the strong religious traditions, both Calvinist and Roman Catholic, which still exist in the country today, along with close family ties, aspects of Dutch life which a British government would find hard to legislate for. But benefits can be regulated by law, and up until this year, the Dutch government gave no support to a mother under the age of 18. Sylvie Roop, who now runs a help centre for single mothers, has fought for four years to get a £100 a month payout for them. I told her that a 16-year-old mother in London, for example, could get over £200 a week in child and housing benefit. Here, they're not sensitive to the needs of young mothers. They think by giving such tiny allowances that they'll stop teenage pregnancies. The money they get now barely covers the cost of food and nappies. But maybe the true difference is cultural. Biology lessons at Dutch secondary schools are often devoted to contraception. It's hard to imagine a group of British school children treating a lesson like this with such serious attention to detail. Sue Lloyd Roberts, BBC News, Amsterdam.